Alright. Selamat siang, selamat sore, selamat malam, selamat pagi, selamat apa aja lah buat teman-teman yang ada di seluruh dunia. So, buat teman-teman mungkin banyak yang penasaran ingin bertanya tentang sesuatu yang kita semua tahu tentang burger kill bisa sampai ke luar negeri ke Australia katanya ada apa sebenarnya kok bisa sampai ke Australia ah uh, dengan modal tidak sampai miliaran rupiah ya ini cerita sebuah perjalanan dari band Burger Kill yang bisa sampai ke Australia dan akhirnya sampai juga ke Amerika katanya Amerika oke okay. uh, tapi sebelumnya sebenarnya video ini bukan tentang Burger Kill tetapi ada hubungannya dengan Burger Kill, ya. Ini sangat banyak hubungannya dengan Burger Kill. Uh, ketika Burger Kill kok bisa sampai ke Australia dan saya tidak mem, uh, men, apa namanya mem, menyuruh meminta satu miliar dari Burger Kill seperti yang dilakukan oleh Face of Voice of Bullshit. Biar kita dengar ceritanya sebenarnya ada apa gitu. Terus siapa saja? Apa hubungannya dengan metal yang kita tahu sekarang antara Burger Kill dan geng crime di Australia. Baiki-baiki yang ada di Australia para biker, yang asli biker bukan seperti biker dari Ruwet atau apa yang di Indonesia yang gaya-gayaan doang, bukan ini para penjahat. Ini ah uh, Ada cerita tentang orang bunuh diri, ada cerita penjara. Tapi ini adalah, ini adalah cerita hidup saya juga. Dan ini ada hubungannya dengan saya dan Burger Kill. Jika Anda masih ingat, dulu waktu almarhum Pak Eben datang ke Australia dengan saudara Agung. Dulu sampai naik limosin dulu Limosin Limosin Band Indonesia yang sampai ke Australia Yang band metal Yang pernah keluar negeri yang naik limosin itu Ya cuma mereka aja Kalau menurut saya ya Saya nggak mengada-ada Enggak saya bukan mengada-ada Ini hanyalah menceritakan yang sebenarnya Ya uh, Sebentar ya Ini Cerita ini adalah Sebuah cerita panjang Perjalanan hidup saya juga Ya uh, nah, Saya Akan bercerita panjang tentang Uh, burger kill di sini kalau bisa saya akan coba hanya dengan satu video tapi kalau sampai berjilid-jilid bisa juga buat kamu kamu yang banyak bertanya tentang siapa saya siapa Jason Huta Galung terus banyak juga yang bilang kok burger kill sampai bisa ke Australia itu ini bukti hidup saksi hidup masih banyak masih banyak mengapa mereka bisa sampai bermain dengan di panggung-panggung internasional di sini yang men, yang mem, mendewasakan Burger Kill terus untuk tur dan sampai hari ini termasuk band yang sangat sukses di Indonesia dan termasuk masih band favorit saya seumur hidup ya yang salah so so ini Ada video yang saya mau tunjukkan, saya temukan tentang ya murid saya, saya juga ada di sana, cuma saya tidak begitu bodoh bisa ada di kamera. 
hanya yang baik-baik saja saya bagi kamera. Tapi inilah yang terjadi waktu di luar negeri. Di Australia. Ya, biar kita sama-sama tahu. Inilah cerita di luar negeri ya. cerita tentang ada apa di belakang tour Burger Kill yang di Australia yang di Australia mereka bertemu siapa saja mengapa sejarah Burger Kill itu sangat besar ya kita mau dengar kalau kalau mau dengar ya langsung dari mulut kuda kita tahu orang di Australia itu perjalanan panjang mereka Perjalanan panjang Burger Kill Dan apa hubungannya dengan saya Dan teman-teman Ya Ini cerita Tentang buah Cerita With tattoos covering nearly every inch of his body Nah sebentar Biar kita buat dulu subtitlenya Berbahasa Indonesia Draped in heavy gold chains Matching his gold plated teeth There was no mistaking bikey boss Brent Wrecker. He brought Rock Machine Motorcycle Club from North America to Australia. He later took it upon himself to clean up the shattered reputation of Fink's MC. Though, after mounting legal troubles and struggling with his mental health, Brent's life came to a sad end. This is the tragic story of Melbourne bikey boss Brent Wrecker. Brent grew up in Victoria, and like a lot of other young lads his age, he enjoyed playing footy and being with friends. He attended Carangal High School before completing year 12 in Perth. By his teens, his interest in footy had begun to dwindle, and he developed a taste for the bikey life, and began hanging out at clubhouses and tattoo parlors. Tattoo parlor. At the age of 16, Brent got his first studio, tattoo, to say, flowers lato. on his left shoulder for his sisters Lauren and Caitlin. This taste of the bikey life inspired Brent, and he decided he wanted to set up his own motorcycle club in Perth. Brent called the Canadian chapter of the Rock Machine MC and Yang asked if he could set up an Australian chapter. Saya. After some back and forth, they gave him the nod. This was the beginning of Brent's life as a bikey. Just quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really helps me out and helps the channel grow. The Rock Machine MC was founded in Montreal, Canada in 1986. The club has a colourful history and has seen its fair share of trouble and violence over the years in various bikey wars. In December... Sebentar, biar kita buat subtitle ke bahasa Indonesia. Ya, biar sama-sama mengerti ya. Gak enak kalau gak yang dimengerti. of Fink's MC though Wabe, after mounting bentar, legal jadi bahasa Yahudi yang keluar shit sebentar sebentar ganti ke bahasa Indonesia
Inilah sebenarnya sejarah hidup saya yang terjadi di Australia. From other inmates due to concerns. Ah, aduh, apa lagi ni? Ini pakai bahasa Belanda. Fucking hell. Ya, Afrika Belanda itu Afrika itu bahasa Belanda mereka. Bahasa Londo. Bentar ya, maaf ya teman-teman. Indonesia Bintangnya orang Indonesia kok nggak bisa berbahasa Indonesia katanya Udah nggak bisa lagi nanti kalian bisa Mengapa tidak bisa berbahasa Indonesia Sepertinya kalau ini sekali lagi tidak bisa kita Anda harus mengambil translasi sendiri ya maaf ya langsung Anda mengambil translasi aja lah saya nggak usah pakai translasi jadi bacanya langsung translasi. The prisoners in the unit. The proposed move so. Oh, oh sebentar. Ini sampai ke sana. Kita mulai dari pertama. He later took it upon himself to clean up the shattered reputation of Fink's MC. Though, after mounting legal troubles and struggling with his mental health, Brent's life came to a sad end. This is the tragic story of Melbourne bikey boss, Brent Wrecker. Brent grew up in Victoria, and like a lot of other young lads his age, he enjoyed playing footy and being with friends. He attended Carangal High School before completing year 12 in Perth. By his teens, his interest in footy had begun to dwindle and he developed a taste for the bikey life and began hanging out at clubhouses and tattoo parlors. Hey, tattoo parlor. At the age of 16, Brent got his first tattoo, for his sisters Lauren and Caitlin. This taste of the bikey life inspired Brent and he decided he wanted to set up his own motorcycle club in Perth. Brent called the Canadian chapter of the Rock Machine MC and asked if he could set up an Australian chapter. After some back and forth, they gave him the nod. This was the beginning of Brent's life as a bikey. Just quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really helps me out and helps the channel grow. The Rock Machine MC was founded in Montreal, Canada in 1986. The club has a colorful history and has seen its fair share of trouble and violence over the years in various bikey wars. In December 2009, Australian authorities officially announced that the Rock Machine nah, Motorcycle Club had dulu. opened the chapter Kyle. in Perth. Though nah, the news didn't go down well with the clubs, this was seen as an act of aggression by the already established jahat. Rebels Motorcycle Club. Threats and verbal exchanges online between the two clubs soon occurred. Though it didn't take long before things heated up and went past just online threats. In 2010, there was a spat of tit-for-tat violence between the two clubs. In July 2010, a brawl broke out at a nightclub between members of both groups, which led to several people being injured. Several months later, in October... Ini, uh, perhatikan hari, uh, tanggalnya, uh, tahunnya, bulan-bulannya. Mana pas waktu itu saya sangat sibuk dengan Burger Kill juga, waktu mereka mau tour ke Australia. Jadi kita lanjut juga, coba. Yeah. Members of Rock Machine MC firebombed a vehicle belonging to a member of the Rebels. The firebombing continued in November when members of Rock Machine set ablaze a tattoo parlor and another vehicle belonging to the Rebels. The police knew they needed to clamp down on these clubs to try and stop the escalating violence. On the 29th of November 2010, a member of Rock Machine was charged when police uncovered a stash of high-powered firearms in his car boot during a traffic stop. The weapon itu anak buah saya dulu dia kerja dengan saya saya yang ngajari mereka nato saya ngajari mereka untuk berbisnis bisa bertanyakan sekarang hari ini juga orang-orangnya juga masih hidup ya buat fans-fansnya POB kalau mau tahu seized include an automatic rifle a 12 gauge sawn-off shotgun and a 44 magnum lever action rifle along with ammunition 
During this war with the rebels, French was serving as the rock machine's sergeant at arms and didn't shy away from getting his hands dirty. Though Brent's involvement ultimately led to him going to jail for extortion, it was reported that Ah, uh, waktu itu kita ngobrol-ngobrol sebenarnya orang yang dua orang ini yang mereka maksud itu adalah customer saya, klien saya. Dia kan sering ngobrol, bercanda, bermain-main bersama. Tapi sepertinya Beritulah orang-orang bodoh sini, orang-orang geng-gengan itu yang bodoh-bodoh uh, Mencampur aduk urusan geng dengan urusan satu studio Dan saya tidak terima uh, Saya terjebak di antara Rebel dan Rock Machine Peristiwa inilah yang membuat saya harus meninggalkan Australia Barat Dan saya harus pindah ke Melbourne Saya dituduh macam-macam, di fitnah Nah, panjanglah ceritanya sampai saya hampir masuk penjara. Kita lanjutkan lagi. Oh iya, dan anak buah saya di sini juga diceritakan dia akan masuk penjara selama tiga tahun. Brent gave two lads a bash or cash ultimatum. The ultimatum was given after the two victims had supposedly boasted about their. Jadi ini mereka bercerita tentang mereka berteman dengan kita ini. Gak apa-apa kita berteman dengan mereka soalnya kita. Bagian musik bukan bukan di, di gengnya. Menurut orang-orang geng ini nggak suka begitu. Uh, kalau saya tidak mau tahu, saya menghargai mereka. Saya juga terjebak di pertemanan saya dengan kedua grup tersebut. Yang satu teman saya bekerja, yang satu lagi teman saya growing up. Sekarang banyak tinggal di Bali mereka buka ituan, buka restoran dan lain-lain. Tapi inilah kenyataan yang sebenarnya. Anak buah saya yang kerja dengan saya itu berteman dengan mereka masuk jadi geng. Sementara teman-teman yang lain mereka anggap remeh. Klien-klien kita banyak yang hilang. Uh, ini menyebabkan saya dengan partner saya yang menjebak saya dan juga mencuri dari saya, merampok dari saya. Saya jujur, saya berani. Dia orangnya pengecut, walaupun dia orangnya besar. Tapi buat saya, dia pengecut. Si pengecut tadi adalah partner saya kerja. Buat member Burger Kill yang dua kali ke Australia, pasti ingat, pasti tahu siapa. Yang partner saya di Lost City. Dan yang mengundang Burger Kill ke Australia, yang membawa, yang mengurus itu semuanya saya. ya Jangan, uh, apa namanya, Jangan sembarangan kita uh, menuduh yang tidak-tidak Karena saya jujur Saya bercerita di sini adalah fakta ya? Ini adalah fakta yang jelas Yang pasti Yang sebenarnya Bukan yang available Ya Bukan yang abal-abal, bukan. Kita mungkin lanjut, tonton dulu. Dan dari sana kita ading lagi. Ya. Biar gampang. Association with the club, an accusation both lads denied. It was reported that Brent either wanted the cash or video footage of the two lads bashing their friend. They were also told they would be killed if they went to the police. As the lad. Jadi, si Brent memaksa klien kita ini dia harus ngasih duit sekitar 20 juta atau pukul dulu temanmu yang kamu dengar dia cerita-cerita katanya gitu. Jadi orang anak-anak ini masih muda-muda, masih kecil-kecilan. Mereka nggak berani untuk saling pukul-pukulan. Jadi terpaksa mereka melaporkan kejadian tersebut kepada polisi dan polisi juga langsung masuk. Were unable to pay the two thousand dollars and didn't want to attack their friend. They went to the authorities. Brent was arrested and sentenced to three years in prison. It was during his time behind bars that his twenty-one-year-old brother, Tyron, took his own life in Melbourne on New Year's Eve, two thousand and eleven.
Brent's mother told reporters in an interview he was forever haunted by this. After being released from prison, Brent moved back to Melbourne and it was here he patched over to the Finks Motorcycle Club. The Finks MC were founded in Adelaide in 1969 and are easily recognisable by their bold black and white colours. Their iconic logo is of Bung, the court jester from news comic strip The Wizard of Id, where the line, the king is a Fink, is often shouted. The Finks are a tight-knit group, known as much for its rigorous membership process and demand for security as... Jadi biar, biar gampang untuk diingat, uh, ini mereka ini bukan geng main-mainan ya, ini mereka-mereka ini bukan hanya pakai jaket-jaketan doang, adalah kisah nyata dalam hidup saya, orang-orang yang saya interaksi setiap hari. Tadinya saya itu hanya banyak bermain di belakang layar. Um, biarkan saya coba mendidik orang-orang buletnya yang besar-besarnya itu untuk uh, menjadi uh, apa namanya menjadi uh, jembatan penjembatan di saya dengan uh, keadaan yang ada di sini karena saya tidak mau ikut ke depan waktu itu namun Teman saya ini melakukan kesalahan besar. Mereka membuka geng di Perth. Inilah cerita sebenarnya ya. Cerita aslinya. Jadi, maaf saya potong-potong. Harus saya jelaskan pelan-pelan. As its notorious criminal reputation, in 2014, the Finks decided they need to redesign the patch. The drunk character of Bung was given a new look, a harder and more aggressive look. A senior member of the club said at the time that this was done partly to send a message. Back in 2001, Fink's MC were named as one of the targets for the police operation Avatar, a law enforcement task force which aimed to take down 1% of motorcycle clubs. In 2010, members of Fink MC and members of Coffin Cheaters MC were attending the Harley Street bike drag racing event where it's claimed that one club member spat on a rival. This led to a bloody brawl which resulted in one Fink's member being shot in the leg and another having three fingers sliced off. In 2015, the club came up against heavy pressure from the police which nearly caused the club to collapse after police raided 20 Fink's properties and arrested 17 members, charging them with everything from drugs and weapons offences to extortion attempts and planning a kidnap. This led to the club struggling financially under the weight of mounting legal fees and had a bad boy reputation across Melbourne. Though Brent believed he could change this and turn the club around, After joining Fink's MC, Brent began to rise through their ranks and eventually became the Fink's national president. Brent's mother said he was fearless and one of the hardest riders in town. He could ride like no one else. It was like a movie. He would rev his bike and everyone would move out the way. It was better than sex, going for a ride with my son. Brent wanted to send the message, the Fink's have returned to Victoria. In an interview with the Daily Mail, Brent stated that the club sees Victoria as an important place to hold territory as it's one of the few states where bikies are afforded their human rights without tough consorting laws to drive them underground. Bikey clubs are the last stand for human rights. In Australia, no one is allowed to do anything anymore. We, like everyone else, just want to hang out with our mates and go for a drink on Friday night without being... Itu betul yang apa kata mereka itu, bahwa kita itu seperti tidak memiliki hak lagi sama sekali di negara barat, di negara maju. Hampir semuanya dikontrol dengan polisi. Kita tidak bisa berbuat apa-apa pun, tidak bisa ber melakukan apapun. Itu tato yang di wajah saya yang membuat dulu. Uh, saya sengaja buat bahan mechanical karena... Kalau seandainya tulisan atau apa itu pasti akan menjadi masalah dengan polisi. Ya, kita lanjut. Being told we can't. Brent claimed the days of police pulling their members over to allegedly find a boot full of meth, steroids and cash are over. However, Brent's ambition to clean up the club's image 
wasn't plain sailing. Along the way, he made enemies both inside and outside the Finks. On the 31st of May 2018, at 4.40 a.m., while Brent and his wife and their two-week-old son slept, their home was shot at multiple times and Brent's car was firebombed. Bullets went through the house as well as the next door neighbor's house, though Brent and his family were unharmed in the attack. CCTV footage shows a parked car at the property burst into flames before a man runs back to the driver's seat of a waiting vehicle. As he starts the car, several shots are fired from the back driver's side with a high-powered weapon. Ten minutes after the attack, the police found what they believed to be the getaway car set alight nearby. The night of violence made front page news and led to a large scale police investigation. Police were also concerned they could have an all out bikey war on their hands. Eventually, Rebels enforcer Matthew Bruce was charged with the violent incident. Bruce held the position of sergeant at arms at the Rebels Motorcycle Club and he was charged with a series of offences including discharging a firearm at premises, reckless conduct endangering life, criminal damage by fire, prohibited person possessing a firearm and theft of a motor vehicle. However, from that point, Brent feared for his family's safety and got a gun for protection. His mother said he was always moving because he was told he was going to be shot. At home, he would always be looking around. He would think he heard something, then go have a look. He was mostly worried about Tess and their son. The job of cleaning up the Fink's reputation hit another bump in the road when three months after the drive-by shooting, Brent and a group of Finks allegedly beat up a man with a tire iron on September 9th, 2018. Police alleged Brent gave the orders to bash Nicholas Gold as part of a revenge hit. Brent believed Nicholas had released private photos of a female friend, Tara Egglestone. Covert listening devices planted as part of a drug trafficking investigation had recorded a conversation between Brent. Perempuan di sini selalu biasa menjadi masalah. Saya juga udah pernah udah berapa kali kena dengan seperti ini. Saya sampai dipitnah dulu dengan cewek umur di bawah umur. Saya dipitnah saya tapi lewat pengadilan saya menang. Itu dan itu menghancurkan masa depan saya dan banyak lagi. Biasanya di sini kalau kamu itu tidak berasosiasi dengan geng atau bike club mereka akan datang ke rumahmu kalau kamu nah, apa menako di rumahmu. Mereka datang ke rumahmu, mukulin kamu, apa motong jari-jarimu atau potong pahamu, kakimu gitu. Atau tembak kakimu. Jadi saya tidak bukanlah siapa-siapa, jadi hanya saya hanya berstrategi bagus, pintar. Saya belum pernah datangi. Ya, bukan datangi, tapi enggak pernah kembali lagi gitu maksudnya. Cerita lainlah ceritanya. Ya, apa yang terjadi itu saya sudah hampir di sini Saya sudah hampir 30 tahun Saya menato di studio Dan di Pribadi Tapi saya tetap saya Ya Ingat itu Brent and Tara On September 8th During which she claimed Nicholas and another man Had posted nude photos of her on Facebook The two officers stationed outside the home on the day of the attack had been instructed not to intercept the group for their own safety, allowing the attack to go ahead. Brent and another man were arrested by police and Brent was locked up at Melbourne Assessment Prison over the alleged assault. After being arrested, Brent had initially been granted bail. It's reported during this time of freedom, Brent had been trying to turn his life around and go legitimate. A prison whistleblower stated, he was doing really well on the outside. He started addressing his mental health issues, was trying to get out the club, and had got some legitimate work. It was reported that Brent was in talks with the Finks about... Di sini, saya juga di Melbourne sudah pindah. Dia juga di Melbourne waktu itu. Namun kita tidak berhubungan lagi. Karena apa yang terjadi di Perth. Jadi saya mencari. In the club, and had even started the process of having tattoos removed. However, the director of the Office of Public Prosecution won an appeal in the Supreme Court that saw Brent's bail revoked in February 2019. 
the same whistleblower stated he hadn't done anything wrong, the OPP were just gung-ho that he shouldn't have got bail in the first place. On his return to prison, Brent was livid with his incarceration and his mental health started to seriously decline. The whistleblower said he made it very, very clear that any chance he got if he was on his own that he was going to After several failed attempts to Brent was moved to Port Phillip Prison in Victoria in May 2019 and placed in a specialist unit aimed at assessing inmates with significant mental health issues. However, in November that year, he was shipped back to Ravenhall Prison where he had previously attempted to The whistleblower said Ravenhall? Tidak begitu jauh dari tempat saya tinggal dulu Dave Rosanowski, apa, Blok Spitter Dia dari sana, tinggal di sana Jadi kita kalau lewat mau ke rumahnya Saya harus melewati ini tiap hari Ravenhall is great in theory, but a lot of staff are very young, very inexperienced, and it's not very well run in comparison to what it could be. It was reported that Brent had complained of being frustrated and bored before warning prison staff he would f over a cancelled dental appointment. He told a guard, do we have to get what we want? He later told a prison doctor he and other inmates all planned to f if their demands weren't met. It had been reported that Brent had been desperate to obtain a prison job and had threatened violence if he didn't get his way. Prison bosses agreed it was best to move Brent to a unit away from other inmates due to concerns he was wielding influence over other prisoners in the unit. The proposed move saw Brent when guards came to collect him. Upon his move to the Forbes unit, he told staff he had no plans to He was placed under hourly observation, which quickly identified trouble with a foot. Brent had covered his cell in toilet paper and had blocked the cell door with a mattress. When guards rushed around to a rear window to see what had happened inside, they saw a chair wedged in his shower. The guards then forced their way into Brent's cell, where they saw him lying on the floor with a He couldn't be revived. The whistleblower said, Wrecker should never have been moved to that unit given his fragile state of mind. There are padded cells, no hanging points, no electrical points, none of that. He absolutely should have been in one of those. He was a ticking time bomb, 100%. Brent's death raised a lot of questions about the prison system and if this could have been prevented. A Victorian coroner is investigating the events leading up to Brent's move out of the specialist unit, his mental health history and risk assessment of him by the staff. His mother said there are many things she misses about her son. She said, like her, he had small ears and a big attitude. This brings us to the end of the video. Let me know what you think below. As always, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Till next time, take care. So... Itulah yang terjadi waktu itu udah lama waktunya tapi itu pas sekali saat-saat Burger Kill mampu datang ke Australia didukung oleh saya ya uh, kesempatan saya bisa memasukkan Burger Kill ke Australia dan ditiru oleh yang lain-lain di Bandung kok sama lu malu lah ya yang mengikuti mengikut, dengan POB itu ya dari sana Lalu meniru juga dari Superman is Dead, SID. Terus saya melakukan sendiri bahwa Dead Pomit sekalian juga. Tak lupa. Buka aja lah biar lebih gampang. Soalnya ini kaos ini nggak ada di Indonesia. Adanya di Australia. juga dulu saya yang bawa ke Australia. Wala. Genophobic record worldwide. Australian tour. That comic 2010. Ya. Jadi. Buat fan-fan POB. Yang gelo-gelo. Yang merasa pintar. Bandmu itu karbitan. POB itu karbitan Ya Gak usah malu Itulah keadaan yang sebenarnya 
Burger Kill itu ya modal mau kondo, modal kontol doang. Model berani, model, itulah ciri khasnya orang Indonesia. Enggak seperti itu ngutang-ngutang atau miliar. Kalian itu kan dikerjain sama orang-orang gudang enggak apa jarum, perusahaan rokok. Dan saya juga tidak mau bekerja sama dengan perusahaan rokok dulu waktu Burger Kill datang. Saya ucap saya suruh janji mereka, namun malah mereka nah dulu bekerja sama dengan atap dan jualan rokok. Itulah satu-satunya, satu juga yang tidak saya suka, yang disponsor-sponsori. Jadi kalau banyak yang bertanya, apa hubungannya? Ya itulah hubungannya sampai hari ini. Makanya saya tidak suka, saya permalukan band yang disponsori oleh tukang rokok, pengacong rokok. Jangan salah, ya. Kita tahu sebenarnya apa yang terjadi yang... Sampai Burger Kill menjadi Golden God itu ada hubungannya dengan saya. Ya, uh, terima kasih banyak sudah menonton video ini. Jadi saya mengingat banyak masa lalu cukup indah. Itu tadi yang mereka ceritakan itu studio tato studio itu disitulah Vicky Mono dari Burger Kill ditato dulu oleh saya. Vicky Mono tahu orang-orang ini. Nah ini, oh bukan, si Umika ya, ya iya, itu dia di sampingnya, ini nih Umika ya, itu yang kena 3 tahun, oh bukan, ya, hang on a second, nah it's fucking Andres, hang on, hang on a second, tunggu sebentar ya, nah ini, dengan Pak Tua, Almarhum, Monsieur, uh, inilah orang-orang yang dia diceritakan tadi di sana itu. Dan ini waktu kita pergi nonton Slayer, sama Machine Head, Pak Undang ini dulu Pak, dengan Agung dan Pak Tua, Monsieur Men, uh, ini kita ada beli mesin dulu. Ceritanya enak lah itu ya. Ah, waktu itu Burger Kill itu menjadi sejarah. Band pertama Indonesia yang mampu. Juga pakai pisah, lengkap semuanya. Enggak enggak nyuri-nyuri itu, enggak bohong-bohongan gitu. Enggak ngutang-ngutang gitu. Ya. Uh, mengingat kata dari Pak Tua ah uh, tak bisa kita lupakan apa Slogan beliau Keep smoking metal engine Katanya Fuck yeah Keep smoking metal Ini maksudnya dia Sini Pak Tua Adalah Ini Dua ribu sepuluh Dua ribu sepuluhan ya Pak Tua Semoga kamu dilapangkan di alam sana. Saya tidak percaya yang namanya dunia fana. Jadi apapun itu selamat jalanlah. Ya. Saya bangga bisa menjadi temanmu dan kenal dengan kamu. Ya, Pak tua. Satu buah sejarah dalam hidup saya yang tak akan bisa saya lupakan. Dan buat anak-anaknya juga sama ibu Anggi. Uh, santai bu. Tenang bu, saya tidak memiliki rasa dendam atau benci atau apa kepada beliau. I love him too. Ibu, mengerti, ibu mengertilah. Saya bangga menjadi teman dia. Dan saya akan selalu melindungi yang namanya Burger Kill itu. Walaupun saya kritik, saya protes. Tapi karena cinta saya kepada Burger Kill. Ibu ya, terima kasih banyak bu. Uh, Sampaikan kepada beliau Nanti kalau ada waktu Jason, say hi Pak Tua, say hi Oke, okay? terima kasih banyak Sampai jumpa Buat teman-teman di Bandung Di Indonesia Di mana saja anda berada Pengen ketemu Miss you guys Pak Andris 
Abah Andris yang sedang ber duka cita hari ini karena ibu beliau baru meninggal kemarin. Yang namanya ibu itu kita makin lama makin rindu kita cinta kita dengan ibu kita itu saya mengerti sekali orang Indonesia itu. Jadi semoga beliau dilapangkan di alam sana dengan Tuhannya ya. Uh, dan buat Bapak Radang Kelamin apa kabar juga itu? Semoga tenang sana santai saja ya. Enggak hmm, udah lama kan enggak ada apa puluh dua bulan sudah kamu dewasa itu, ya drummernya radang kelamin itu. Dan buat teman-teman lain yang ada di Indonesia, lanjutlah keluarkan albumnya apa itu, terus dari kriminal Indonesia, ya siapa lagi? Semoga buat pemerintah Indonesia saya meminta keluarkan tem- bebaskan teman saya bebaskan si bacot dari penjara di Bali. We miss him. Uh, apa gunanya memenjarakan dia hanya karena rumput daun-daunan yang diciptakan yang kamu akui oleh Tuhanmu? Dia mengisap itu Bukan dia saja Jutaan milik manusia Di dunia ini yang melakukan Apa yang dia lakukan Tapi tidak dihukum sepanjang itu Ya Buat bacot All the best man Love you man yeah. Aku ada janji sama kamu kemarin Sebelum itu kan banyak masalah teman. Bagaimana Kamu ngerti lah Kamu ngerti Keadaan Hampir mati, masih muda Tapi hari ini saya terlihat muda dan gampang Jadi buat teman-teman Indonesia Dukung saya Untuk selalu Menceritakan Indonesia Dengan keunikannya Jangan salah Negara kita itu negara unik ya. Ini mungkin uh, Podcast atau Video saya terakhir dari Bis ini Karena Saya jual Tempat ini akan saya jual Jadi semoga Duitnya banyak yang saya jual itu Dan saya bisa datang ke Indonesia Bisa main-main ya? Terima kasih banyak ya semuanya Santai-santai ya Terima kasih Saya sedikit mabuk Itu jangan public records Dan Burger King Yeah boy Sama bertemu kembali di suatu waktu Dan tempat dimanapun Anda berada Terima kasih banyak